Welcome to the show me. Welcome to the show me state. We're just down the road from the gateway to the west. Maryland Heights, Missouri, the site of this regional final and the most played rivalry in the history of college hockey for a birth in the Frozen Four here tonight. Michigan, Michigan State meeting for the 343rd time, but for the first time in the NCAA tournament, they will meet and the rivals will have that berth and punch their ticket to the Frozen Four in St. Paul. Both teams had to come back on Friday. Going into the third, both face deficits. And then Michigan State, Jeremy Davidson won it in overtime, and the senior propelled Michigan State into this regional final. For the Wolverines, they rallied with three goals in the third. Dylan Duke, a couple of goals to lead the comeback. So Michigan is here after they beat North Dakota, will play Michigan State in this regional final. So the final piece of the puzzle will be decided here in Maryland Heights, Missouri. Along with Stanley Cup champion, former Minnesota Golden Gopher, Ben Clymer. Roxy Bernstein with you. So both teams, Ben, they had to dig deep to get to this regional well, final. Especially impressive because these are two of the younger teams in all of college hockey. Now, what's going to be important for tonight is they don't put themselves in that situation. How do they do that? Well, for one, Michigan State needs to protect their goaltender. In this series, 38 shots going on average towards Augustine, Michigan. Take advantage of that power play. That's fueled them all year long, but you got to work hard to draw those penalties. These two teams met in the Big 12 Tournament Championship in East Lansing. Last Saturday night, an overtime winner for Michigan State. A thriller of a game. And what a goal by the freshman, Patrick Geary, a freshman defenseman from the point, sends his team to their first Big Ten Tournament title. An unbelievable performance. This is the sixth meeting between these two teams this season. Michigan State has won each of the last four after the Wolverines won the first one and put up seven goals in the first meeting between these two teams this season. And the goaltenders are going to be key. A freshman was the most outstanding player at the Big Ten tournament, Trey Augustine, between the pipes. Adam Nightingale. And for Michigan State on the other end, a local kid and a fifth year senior, Jake Barcheski, who grew up 10 minutes from this rink and has about 50 family and friends, had to barter, do whatever he could do to get tickets to get his family well, in here. And he's an experienced goaltender too, being the you know, real cornerstone of Canisius over the years. He's faced more shots than anyone in college hockey. And transferred here to the University of Michigan for a reason to have an opportunity to win a national championship and icing against Michigan just eight seconds into the game you know one of the things I talked to the players about this rivalry has so much emotion but now this is the sixth time in less about the personal aspect that it is early in the season where there's bragging rights and all these things. At this point, it's business. It's about giving themselves an opportunity to play for a national championship. And sometimes you have to be disciplined to do so and eat crow. Off the face off. Artem Levshnov, the talented freshman, shot it up over the net, but kept in by Michigan State, a drive from the point that gets redirected wide off the stick of Nash Neenhouse at Michigan State. Michigan trying to work it out. Neenhouse can't keep it in, and it's tapped ahead by Josh Ernesty of Michigan, and it rolls in on the keeper, and floating it over to the corner is Trey Augustine. Lefshoff did all he could effectively to pick Ernesty there, but he lost his glove and stick in the process. And had to go scoop him up as Neenhouse fans on a headman pass. Taken away, T.J. Hughes for Michigan. The Wolverines hovering around the net. Dylan Duke in a backhand of the slot. And a shot from down low. And a save by Augustine on T.J. Hughes. And a great chance for Michigan. And there are the emotions already. Just 58 seconds in. Just what I say, that they're going to have to stay within themselves. Well, it's broke out right in the midst of that is T.J. Hughes, who's been super impactful in this series. Three goals against the Spartans. How about that pass from Duke? Pair of goals to get here in Friday's action. Look what Augustine had to deal with. And when there's traffic in front of you, one of the main things the netminders are unable to do, Rox, is push off that gold crease and, and use the angles because they're confined to that space. 
Face off win for Michigan and from the line high and wide off the stick of Ethan Edwards. This one gets tapped all the way down and Edwards just short of icing as the goaltender Barcheski steers it over to the junior defenseman Ethan Edwards. Worth noting Michigan is without Seamus Casey their most talented offensively gifted defenseman Gucciardi out for the Spartans so both going with a different lineup from Friday's victories. The key defenseman missing for both teams and David Gucciardi had a goal for Michigan State in their win here against Western Michigan on Friday. Frank Nazar the third plays it across and a shot that does not get through Nazar picks it up and then tipped out by Michigan State going to chase it down is Tyler Duke for the Wolverines. On the breakout Philip LaPointe and punched out of the zone by the Spartans taking control Maxim Sturback for Michigan State. Played in Jake Barcheski the netminder for Michigan sweeps it around held along the boards by Joey Larson for the Spartans now Stephen Holtz the veteran defenseman for Michigan. Pinching in from the point extra time today for Austin Orbitz a freshman with David Gucciardi out of the lineup for Michigan State. Cycling it down low Red Savage at the point stir back a drive that gets tipped wide. And floated out by Tyler Duke of Michigan. Back to the Michigan State blue line and the captain Nash Neenhouse. Barczewski had to be sharp there on Sturback, Sinai, Rister. And he's another player that I think can and will step it up in this game with Gucciardi out. Steven Holtz blocks the shot of Tiernan Shouty. Now back the other way. Stumbling Josh Ernesty goes down. Artem Levchnov gets a clear for Michigan State. And Marshall Warren fires it right back in. One of the things Coach Dorado talked about was owning the neutral zone, building speed through the neutral zone to have success. And so far, the Wolverines are doing just that. In the corner and looking for a tip out front. Yep. Gavin Brindley, and it goes up into the crowd. Well, let's take a look at the C9 Rister here from Sturback in. Great tip by Joey Larson. Joey Larson, a transfer from Northern Michigan, has been a huge contributor this season, topping his career high in goals, assists, and points in this sophomore campaign. Michigan wins the draw. The captain, Jacob Truscott, for Michigan, sends it through the slot. And now here comes Michigan State up the ice. Reed Lepster, transfer from UMass, who won a national championship with UMass a few seasons ago. Dug out along the wall. Jeremy Davidson plays it low. Just over three and a half minutes in. And this one rolls all the way toward Atre Augustine of Michigan State. And now the Spartans re enter. Reed Lepster shoots it high and wide. The senior line has been extremely effective in this series versus Michigan. I think just having those games under their belt has aided them. Luca Fantilli for Michigan. And the pass goes into the feet and through the skates to Frank Nazer. Michigan State takes control. Austin Orvitz banks it ahead. And it rolls in on Jake Barczewski who covers for a draw. And again, we're seeing some extracurriculars between these longtime rivals. Uh, Edwards in there making friends. A stopper for Michigan State. But here's the thing, Roxy. I don't care how tough you are winning will feel a lot better than an extra shot that extra shot if it results in a penalty is going to really hurt a lot to the aggressor. We just saw some of that in the Boston College game giving or Quinnipiac excuse me giving Boston College a power play that they were able to convert on. Turnaround shot from the wall that doesn't get through off the stick of Isaac Howard. And now up top, Daniel Russell sends it down low. Howard tries to play it for Nash Neenhouse, a backhand for Carson Durward. Levchnov active here in this shift, trying to dart down the far side. Frank Nazer the third. And the pass for Rutger McGrorty is taken away by Michigan State. And now here comes Daniel Russell over skates the puck. And and we have a whistle and a stoppage almost five minutes in and we have our first penalty of this regional final. 
huge break here, I believe. Yeah, Gavin Brindley's gonna go. Two minutes hooking from one of the most fleet-footed players in all of college hockey. So the Michigan State power play throughout the course of the season, some 26%. Watch right here, Brindley in the chasing Russell. So the Big Ten Player of the Year, Gavin Brindley, will sit for two minutes. Pays off win for Michigan State. Larson along the wall for the Spartans. And Larson leads them with seven power play goals. Around the perimeter, Artem Lechnov to the right point. Now Lechnov in the high slot. At the blue line to Lechnov. One-timer by Larson is tipped. And loose in the slot, trying to dig it out. Michigan trying to get it clear. But Lechnov tries to play it across for Larson. Number six, Josh Ernest, he's high out on Larson because he's got a wicked one-timer trying to be able to close that gap. Ethan Edwards moves it up. Michigan changing behind the play that they've killed off 40 seconds of this power play. Power play unit for Michigan State that's seventh in the country. 26%, but they're just one for 11 against Michigan this season. And they gave up a shorthanded goal. And the pass scoots over the blue line, and Artie Lechnov has to skate away from Keenan Draper, the son of former Stanley Cup champion Chris Draper, who's here today. Checking out his son. Michigan State. Trying to control the zone, set up a power play. Daniel Russell to the line. Matt Basgall looking for an angle. Down low, in tight, and a save by Marchewski on the doorstep. And a good look for Daniel Russell in tight for Michigan State. Confident save by Barczewski. Solid on that left post as they went high to low on that power play. Two completely different power plays. Look at Chris Draper there. Keenan's father, he played a couple of decades in the National League. Director of amateur scouting for the Red Wings now. Chris Draper won four cups playing with the Red Wings. Held in at the point, Matt Basgall. Walks the blue line. Over to Isaac Howard. In the corner, here's Daniel Russell again for the Spartans. At the line, pass goal, and it's scored! Sneaks through, and it's 1 0. Michigan State may have been a tip in front from Gavin O'Connell. Right now, the officials are discussing. I would imagine they're going to go in the box to look for a potential high stick on the shot coming from distance. The freshman Gavin O'Connell gets his stick on as you see Basco here lean into one. And O'Connell tips it down. Now from that view, I believe this will stand. I would like to see it again, but now it's closer as you go to the ice level. But right away, Michigan was motioning for a further replay. Gosh, on the I mean, obviously, Barczewski going for it with his catching glove. Has the glove up high. How high? Well, close. Uh, O'Connell tipping that puck down. So if it stands a power play goal for Gavin O'Connell is 15th of the season from Matt Basgall. And Isaac Howard, Howard who had two assists in their win Friday against Western Michigan. And they're on review here to see if it was a high stick from Gavin O'Connell on the goal. If it stands, it would be one nothing Michigan State on the power play goal. So the penalty against Gavin Brindley. Tough to see from that angle, but that's just after contact to see the puck going down. Here you see Barczewski reaching for it. And where is the point of contact from Gavin O'Connell in the stick? Is it above the crossbar? I mean, O'Connell's stick. What? Oh, it's so tough. 
Because initially you see it up high, but it's then he's higher, moving it down. But, but then, yeah, he's bringing it down and making the contact. And this is a lengthy review and a critical one. As Michigan State right now with the early strike, if it stands. So a power play that had been struggling recently for Michigan State. They were 0 for 1 Friday against Western Michigan. They went 0 for 3 in the Big Ten tournament. Right here, that's a great view. Take a look, and you be the judge. It is quite close. And is wow, there enough to change I mean, the call? Now it has to be. So the call, just calling the ice is goal. Right. Conclusive evidence to say otherwise is what the officials need. They're coming out of the box with their decision made. All right, we have a verdict and we have a good goal. The call will stand. Power play goal for Gavin O'Connell, a sixth power play tally of the season, and his 15th overall, 1 0 Michigan State. The Spartan strike first, huge for their confidence, and hoping they can continue that trend line, winning four in a row after taking a licking in the series opener. And that series opener did kind of skew the numbers a little bit. Michigan's power play was electric. Four power play goals of the seven they've scored in the series. Lucker McGroarty at center, taken away. And losing on stick handling at center, Isaac Howard played in by Michigan State. This is maybe the most effective fourth line in all of college hockey. Kelly, Shouty, Manisto. And that one comes out over the blue line in an offside call against Michigan State. There's a familiar sight. Tanner Kelly is going to be in the middle of it all game long. Loves it. Competitive. Power play goal early. Michigan State the 1-0 lead on the Wolverines. Rivalry game in the Maryland Heights regional final. And the Big Ten champs, Michigan State, the early power play goal from Gavin O'Connell, leading Michigan 1-0. Just over 13 minutes to go in this opening period of the freshman O'Connell from Plymouth, Minnesota. Dad played at St. Cloud. And he's got the early goal, trying to help Michigan State get to the Frozen Four. Even Holtz looking to break out for Michigan. And eludes Dylan Duke and now fired right back in by the Spartans. Good positioning there to be able to create that turnover for the Wolverines could hit center ice. Here comes Stephen Holtz again. At the center line. Garrett giveaway and then bodies went crashing into the wall. Shivsky was going to be the consumer of that hit and delivered one. Reed Lester now played in low by Michigan. Patrick Geary, the overtime winner against Michigan last Saturday night. Pensman number two in white. And then in the neutral zone, looks like we got a hand pass whistle and a faceoff will come outside of the Michigan end. Very intense back and forth right there between these two teams. Frankie Nazar trying to go in and Matt Basil stepped in and picked him and I was watching the officials here just because you don't want to take that. We've already seen a power play goal 
They get behind the eight ball on these bellies and it's trouble. And Friday, both games, the officials let him play. Very much so. I agree. Almost to a point where, you know, some of the teams were unhappy. There was a late hit that took David Gutierrez out of the game. Now, for further clarification, it was challenged. When it's challenged, it can only be a five. Cannot be a two-minute minor. Frank Naser, the third for Michigan. Sends it rink wide. Artem Levchnov can't clear it. Here comes Michigan breaking in. Naser passing from the backhand. Trying to roof it, and it goes up and over into the netting. Walking down the slot, the defenseman Ethan Edwards joining the play. Great job there by the junior Edwards stepping down, maybe overpassing a bit for my liking. When he got right in that slider, he moves it to Nazer. Wouldn't have hated pulling the trigger right here. Then he gets it on his backhand, does his best to shovel it, but he has Levchnoff coming over at him. Great read as he came in. Face off win for the Spartans. Punched out of the zone by Carson Dorwar. And now Dorwar comes in offside for Michigan State. And they just give up the puck to Michigan. Tapped ahead by Rutger McGorty. Jackson Sturbeck. Outside pass. Orbitz looking in front. Tries the short corner. And it got the shoulder of the keeper. Barczewski kept it Michigan State and it got through to Jake Barczewski who makes the save and then that nifty stick work along the wall by Rucker McGorty. Gavin Brimley brings it in. Spins in the corner. Cycles it for McGorty behind the net. Tips it over to the wing. Moving down the boards. Tyler Duke. Philip LaPointe. Son of former Stanley Cup champion Martin LaPointe. Works in the Canadians front office now and a turnaround shot from the wall that whistles wide from Keenan Draper at the point holds and that's a block going down to a knee the defenseman orbits LaPointe and creeping in for the one timer that goes wide off the stick of Tyler Duke Augustine hangs on and again sticks come up great momentum shift for the Wolverines established by Draper Pletsky and LaPointe just using their size, their speed to cycle the puck and then bring it at Augustine. Right now we have Draper heading off. He'll be joined by Sturback. Pair of coincidentals for roughing or something similar, I would anticipate. The matching minors. And is this the refs right now with everything we've seen so far, the emotion? Ben, try, just trying to get a hold of the game. I think just trying to take it, or just say, hey, enough after the whistle. Like, I don't want to bring anybody up individually, but at this point, I'm just trying to tell you I want less of this. And I think the right choice by them as well. So we'll play four on four for the next two minutes. So matching minors, Draper for Michigan, and Sturback for Michigan State, and both sons of former NHL players is Max and Sturback. His dad, Martin, played for both the Penguins and the Kings. Edwards unhappy there. I think he stepped on Geary's stick and he was right in front of the official. Wanting a call. Patrick Geary banks it ahead. Reed Lepster for Michigan State. Tries to center. Here come on a takeaway the Wolverines. Edwards stick handles trying to move it around Matt Basgall. And now Michigan State takes control. Reed Lepster into the zone. Good job back checking Marshall Warren for Michigan. Now Warren with speed through center. Warren goes wide, goes around Levchnoff, and it takes a hit. Big hit from Nash Neenhaus, and a penalty coming up to Michigan State. And I would anticipate that we might have a further look here on Nash Neenhaus coming over and hitting a fleet-footed Marshall Warren. So Marshall up the far side. Neenhaus makes contact. The Wolverines will have a power play. We come back. So a power play coming up for Michigan as Marshall Warren Drew the penalty. Nash Neenhouse, the captain for Michigan State, off for elbowing. 
to the lethal power play for the Wolverines on the ice. I'm surprised they didn't challenge this. I would have challenged it because the only result would have been a five minute major. The NCAA has been so on top of contact with the head there. Marshall's head clearly snaps around. Face off win for Michigan. Gavin Brindley up top. McGordy on a one timer off the skate. A Patrick Geary and a clear for the Spartans. Four on three this power play. Here's McGorty over to T.J. Hughes and his shot fought off by Trey Augustine hit with a high stick and out of the zone. Great and Michigan the jumping on it and here comes Gavin Brindley. Buck movement for Michigan. This power play operates at 35 percent this year. Still a minute 15 and a man advantage and a good read by Patrick Geary. Now Geary racing up by a shorthand of the fenceman goes in deep and he throws it from a tough angle and squeezing his Barcheski and he leaves it for Rutger McGorty. TJ Hughes gains the zone. Hughes pass down low. One timer that trickles on through off the stick of Gavin Brindley. Along the wall and chipped out and a clear by Tiernan Shouty for Michigan State. Huge clear there for Shouty, so instrumental on this penalty kill. How about that rush by Patrick Geary testing Barcheski at the angle as well. So the matching minors are over. It's a traditional five on four power play for Michigan now. For another 30 seconds. Along the wall, dug out by Frank Nazer. Nazer looking in front. Nazer and it's blockered away by Trey Augustine. He's trying to toe pull that around orbits with the release. Edwards skates it low. Man, has he been active tonight? Nick Boldenhauer cross ice one timer by Nazer and it's kicked out by Augustine right on the top of the goal crease was a stop -a. kept in by Michigan Nazer beautiful stick work down low pass across the slot loose trying to dig it out and we have a whistle and a cover by Augustine and the penalty is over and out of the box is Neenhaus for Michigan State. Frantic sequence in front of the Michigan State net. Oh, just dogged work by Estapa there, trying to do anything he could. Let's take a look at Michigan bringing it to the net. Great play over to Gavin Brindley, who one time that Rucker McGrory with that pass. How about the outstretched Augustine to get the Brindley shot? Nazer taking all sorts of risks there on the blue line. Super confident. And this is how the chaos. Man, watch a stop at 94, just harpooning his stick in there on the ice, trying to jostle that puck loose. Shots are 9 8 Michigan, but 1 0 Michigan State. Face off in the Spartan zone. A jug out by Maxim Sturback. And pushed over the line by the defenseman. The captain, Jacob Trescott, weaves his way in for Michigan. Steers it around. Philip LaPointe knocks it ahead. Good work along the boards by Michigan State. And the hitting picking up as through center. Nicholas Mueller for the Spartans. Mueller dangles. And a shot that gets deflected up into the netting. And a faceoff comes in the Wolverine zone. Mueller with a nice job there as a right handed shot he could shield the puck as he was cutting to the middle but Warren moved his feet and then allowed his stick to not be caught on the left side of Mueller's body that would have allowed him an easy shot. Interesting. Nicholas Mueller has a fourth of his season points in this series against Michigan. Face off win for Michigan State. Goal scorer Gavin O'Connell on a backhand. Patrick Geary can't handle the pass now throws it through up high and an easy save for Barcheski with the glove you saw it all the way for Matt Basgall. Uh, it feels like the D for Michigan State are pretty content throwing those little wristers in trying to battle for some loose pucks Barcheski is going to have to make sure he stays on top of really working to not let bodies cross in front of him you got to move your head you got to dip you got to lean a little bit to make sure you can have a field of vision to that puck.
Michigan State takes control. Red Savage. And a shot from the boards. It goes way up in the netting from Patrick Geary and deflected out. And a faceoff will stay inside the Michigan zone. A little bit pushing and shoving after the fact. Edwards making a friend or two. There is the Big Ten coach of the year, Adam Nightingale. What an impact he's made in just a couple of seasons in East Lansing. Now, these two coaches. Roxy are as young and innovative as you're going to find in the game. Huge futures for them, not just with these universities, but at some point, likely in the National League as well. We welcome those of you just joining us to Maryland Heights, Missouri with Ben Clymer and our ESPN crew, Roxy Bernstein with you. The final piece of the puzzle determined here after you just saw an overtime, Boston College punched their ticket to St. Paul in the Frozen Four. Inside 6.20 to go, first period in the Big Ten champs, Michigan State. An early power play goal from Gavin O'Connell and a 1-0 lead on their rivals, Michigan. And they're meeting for the 343rd time. These two long standing rivals, but the first time in the NCAA tournament. And the save by Trey Augustine, the freshman who was the most outstanding player last week at the Big Ten tournament. And a look at the goal, a controversial goal for Michigan State. Yeah, Pascal fires this puck in and right out front there. Gavin O'Connell makes contact with it, tips it down. The officials had to further review that. It was deemed a good goal. Taking a look at the season series, excuse me, the game recap, what we've seen so far, shots quite even. A couple of power plays for each group. And as you'd expect in a rivalry game, emotions have been running high and fought off and it hits the crossbar after the blocker of Trey Augustine. It's Tyler Duke launched one from the point. Duke plays it cross eyes, fanning on a shot. Stephen Holtz sends it to the corner. Turnaround shot from the wall by Rutger McGorty for Michigan. Now Holtz in deep with a backhand. McGorty centers. Gavin Brindley can't handle the pass. Brindley tries to dig it out. Brindley tied up by the stick of Daniel Russell. How hard was Russell working there to just tie Brindley up? I think the most dynamic player I've seen with my own eyes this year in college hockey. He is shifty as the day is long. Can absolutely buzz. Take a look here at Duke on the point. Release it. I wasn't sure if Brindley, I think he did deflect that puck. Watch from above. Augustine do work in his goal crease. Loose off the draw, and here comes Michigan State. Through center, Tommy Manisto. And he gets driven into the wall right in front of the Michigan bench. Mark Estapa for the Wolverines. Puck bouncing around. And it's loose at the blue line and played back as Michigan State trying to take control. And a hit along the wall delivered by Keenan Draper. And he goes some pushing and shoving with Tanner Kelly when the puck is gone. Every time out there, Tanner Kelly is stirring it up. Just a buzz out there of activity. The guys are definitely finishing their checks. Fanning on a shot, Patrick Geary. Now here comes Michigan countering. Marcus Stappa. And Josh Ernesty tries to play it low, and it's picked off by Geary. Matt Basgall. Now racing after it, Luca Fantilli for the Wolverines. Approaching four and a half to go in this opening period. Patrick Geary, Hetmans, and unable to connect with Reed Lepster and behind the Michigan net, Fantilli has it poked away. Looking to move up ice. Here comes Michigan. T.J. Hughes, who's been very good so far here this weekend for Michigan. Again, Edwards down below the goal line joining that rush. Dylan Duke from the point looking for a redirection, but unable to connect with Ethan Edwards. How about that transition by Fantilli? Whoa, Neenhaus with another hit there as it's whistled down offside was Michigan but Neenhouse didn't stop on that play. Well Shivsky didn't have the puck either. And again. 
he now's got to dial it in a little bit. Nobody wants to sit in the box, especially against the number one power play in all of college hockey that the Wolverines have. rivalry in the history of college hockey and you think of all the games over the years almost 350 between Michigan and Michigan State the first time they're playing in the NCAA tournament dare I say the biggest matchup between these two teams in that's the history a, of their program that's unbelievable yeah when you think about it but I you know so much emotion and, and show you a hit here that Golly is close to the line and this would be something if I was coach Nightingale I would want to just have a quick talk with Nash Neenhouse just saying, hey we love your spirit your competitive nature but we have to just bring this in and touch because that's the second time where he's been in a position where he could have been called for some sort of contact to the head moving it out here comes Red Savage Rick White going wide driving the net from the angle and it's saved by Barcheski as it pops up in the air behind the cage as a shot from Gavin O'Connell the goal scorer on the power play for Michigan State. Gavin Brindley and Michigan comes in offside that little dangle there at the blue line put the Wolverines in ahead of the play. You know for the kids at home be predictable on the blue line so your teammates can react accordingly. NCAA Frozen Four headed to St. Paul. The action begins on Ben Clymer's birthday. Thursday, April 11th, live on ESPN2. For more information, go to the 2024 NCAA Frozen Four. NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. And I love the way the NCAA wants to celebrate your birthday Do you think I get a in happy your birthday town. In St. Paul? Oh, you better. I mean, pretty much. I would imagine. Icing call against Michigan. Maybe I'll get to drop the puck. The ceremonial puck drop. Please, please welcome out former Golden Gopher and Stanley Cup champion, Ben Clymer. Also birthday boy. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, a look there in the low part of your television screen is Isaac Howard, who is on fire. Fifth straight game with an assist that he collected on the first marker by O'Connell. And Howard, who celebrated a birthday yesterday, is 20th, yeah. as did Rutger McCourty of Michigan. And those two are friends, and they played on the USA Juniors team together, won gold together. Now, they're not necessarily friends this week. Not today. But Rutger did tell us he texted Isaac to wish him a happy birthday. Two words. Two words. Two words. Happy and birthday. That was it. Now, I think there was a response, but was it an actual response or was it like one of those double tap? I give you the thumbs up. Yeah, just the thumbs up. Yeah, just yeah, the yeah. emoji. That's it. Take a look at what these two teams have contributed to the U.S. national team's success. Rutger McGordy, the captain. Trey Augustine was stunning between the pipes. Here comes Michigan State moving it up. Played in deep. By Tanner Kelly along the wall, Tommy Manisto. And the finished product sends it down low. Big hit delivered, Ethan Edwards behind the net. Now Edwards comes up with the puck, leads it up the wall, tipped through center. And a backhand in deep by Garrett Shifsky of Michigan. Coaching two and a half to go in this opening period. And you saw also Jameis Casey on that list. He is not available for Michigan today. He was injured in the first period Friday of their win against North Dakota and did not come back. So they're missing maybe their best defenseman today. We led the Big Ten in assists. He can jump up. Edwards seems to be taking that role this game very active. Nicholas Mueller. Artem Levshnov and a backhand that gets chopped wide. Levshnov's going to pinch down here nearly to the goal line. Levchnov considered a top five prospect for the NHL draft coming up in June. The freshman defenseman from Belarus. It's just an absolute unit out there. I mean, he is strong as can be. A year early here into the college ranks. And he just turned 18 a few weeks ago. I mean, he's just built. He will be a complete 200 foot player, not just going to provide offense, but. Now Michigan State also missing a key guy in their blue line David Gucciardi who scored a goal in their win against Western Michigan. 
on Friday not available as he left the game and left the bench in the third period did not return. But Levchnov who made that brilliant play on the rush in the final minute to help Michigan State get the tying goal as they beat the Broncos in overtime on a goal from Jeremy Davidson the senior. Flipped in by Frank Nazer. One minute to go here in this first period. It's been emotionally charged back and forth physical as you'd expect between these two long standing rivalries the rivals I should say and Michigan State this year winning their first Big Ten regular season and tournament championship Garrett Shifsky goes wide and Shifsky a wrist shot and covering and swallowing it up is Trey Augustine and again the sticks come up as Carson Dorward of Michigan State and Dylan Duke exchanging pleasantries yeah, Dylan Duke has been unbelievable in this series but he's as hot as any player for the Wolverines right now a pair of goals on Friday four shots plus three love his jump the kid can absolutely fly out there the Michigan's picked up their play they had just three shots the first ten minutes and since the midway point of this first period they've got nine now both these teams they had some ebb and flow in their first period on Friday. Then they settled in and started to build the momentum that we expected them to have. And a penalty coming up. And Michigan will close out the first period on a power play. And again, the teams need to be separated as Isaac Howard in the middle of things for Michigan State. But the Wolverines will get the man advantage here with 22 seconds left in the first period. Carson Dorward with the slash. He was rapidly pursuing the puck carrier right in front of the benches. And gave him a considerable chop as Edwards was the puck carrier. So Michigan 0 for 1 so far on the power play. And the Wolverines this year in the previous five games against Michigan State, 7 for 17 on the power play against the Spartans. I mean, this is just a situation where if I'm a coach of either team, I talk to my team about things that we can control. We can control our structure. We can control our preparation, our attitude. We can also control our discipline. And, and you know, if I'm Coach Nightingale, I'm saying, hey, guys, like this is like playing with matches. Like, it's, eventually, we're going to get burned here. It's a bad choice. Getting the number one power play unit in college hockey. Michigan at 35% on the power play. At the line, Jacob Trescott throws it on net, steered aside by Trey Augustine. On a backhand, but not a clear. Prescott across. Here's McGordy and looking for a tip in front, gets redirected wide. Gavin Brindley across ice and a diving, lunging play. Tiernan shouting shorthanded for Michigan State. Throws it on net, fought off by Barcheski, and that'll do it for the first 20 minutes. Unbelievable read by Tiernan Shouty there, shorthanded, anticipating the pass of McGordy. He jumps on it and gets the important zone exit. Uh. Power play goal, Gavin O'Connell of Michigan State giving the Spartans the early lead. It's what you expect in a rivalry game. It has been heated, and it's going to get even more testy as we progress. 1 0. Michigan State after one. Go to the studio with Andrew Raycroft. Here is Arda Ocal. One nothing lead for Michigan State. The Big Ten champs against their rivals in this regional final. And the final piece of the puzzle for the Frozen Four will be decided here in Maryland Heights, Missouri. A power play goal by Gavin O'Connell. The only tally so far in this one. Along with Ben Clymer, Roxy Bernstein with you. And this is everything you'd expect in a rivalry game, especially Ben, with so much on the line. A lot of pushing, a lot of shoving, high intensity. Maybe cross the line a couple times. It was physical in that first the period. The line has moved a little bit. I think that's what it is. And I talked to both these teams. They said, no, this will be a little bit more of a business trip. We're not going to be overly emotional. Well, I'd say that the emotions are high, and the boys will be boys because it is rough out there. Now they need to make sure they do their best to stay out of the penalty box. You're going to get a penalty, Roxy. You have to be a coincidental. You do not want to sit by yourself as Carson Dorward's doing right now for the Spartans power play for Michigan here for another minute and a half. 
So a power play to open up the second. And a clear for Michigan State. Still a minute 20 left in the man advantage. Make up Truscott. Drops it for Gavin Brindley. A cut through center. And trying to backhand pass to the wing. And it goes off his teammate. Duke uh, Dylan even, Duke. He wasn't even moving. <laughs> he was anchored to the blue line. Fired in from center by Jacob Truscott. And it just squeezes over the blue line, and Michigan can't set up the power play. Still 50 seconds to go in the man advantage. Here's Trescott, the captain, and trying to drop it and misses his target in Gavin Brindley. Just his power play is in disarray compared to what I've seen at other points of the season. Rimmed around by Maxim Sturback. And now Michigan State will bring it up ice with Red Savage. He plays it in deep. 25 seconds left in the power play. T.J. Hughes for the Wolverines. And he leaves it for Frank Nazer. And then another. Effectively leaves it for Red Savage nearly. The miscommunication, just the Wolverines are not on the same page. And Dorward will come out of the box in five seconds. Now, mind you, they're without the quarterback of their power play, Seamus Casey. Has something to do with it. And looking for the Dorward coming out of the box and trying to get him on a long headman fee, but Michigan ready for that. Cycled in low by Marcus Stapa, the Wolverines. Held in at the line. Ethan Edwards for Michigan. Josh Ernesty behind the net. Now Estapa moves it along at the point. Here's Truska and the captain. Good job keeping it in Marshall Warren. Pass toward the slot broken up by Maxim Sturback. And an odd man chance for Michigan State. Back the other way. Carson Dorward whistles one high and wide. And tries the glove side there. And I think Barczewski got a little piece of that one. Local kid Barczewski, the goaltender for Michigan, the save. Steers it to the corner off of Isaac Howard. Way out on his angle there. Tyler Duke through center. Duke leaves it for Keenan Draper on a backhand. That's fought off by Augustine. Pinballed around in front. And creeping in from the point is Holtz. And now Michigan State throws the length of the ice and the race for the puck. And just getting the advantage, Tyler Duke earns the icing for Michigan. Face off will come back at the other end. Tommy Manisto buzzing all the way down there to try to negate that icing. A great individual effort. Take a look at this odd man rush that led to the door war shot that Barczewski had to be sharp on. For the kids at home, when you're coming in on an odd man rush, Shooting to the far side is dangerous because it can break the other team out. And if you've got an odd man rush, if it goes the other way, guess who's going to have an odd man rush? Your opposition. Shooting to the near side or five hole. Much more cautious, conservative way to go about it. Michigan State now offside. A good play at the blue line by Luca Fantilli of the Wolverines. Of course, he is the brother of Adam Fantilli, last year's Hobie Baker winner, and now with Columbus. And announced that he may sit out the rest of the year. He had a leg laceration. He's been sitting out for, I think, three weeks. Not healing appropriately. Obviously, the Blue Jackets not looking to contend for the Stanley Cup this season. I don't think there's that urgency to try to get back, just because, you know, let's get him healthy. I get it. I'm still a pro. Love down by Red Savage. Now, Ethan Edwards for Michigan. Fantilli ahead. McGorty. Artem Levchnov moves in for Michigan State. And the young defenseman. Moved along here is jumping in from the point. Lechnov at the point. It's O'Connell, the goal scorer. And through traffic, it goes high and wide. Tipped ahead by Nash Neenhouse, but then taken away. Luca Fantilli for Michigan. And Artem Lechnov with the big hit in the neutral zone. And it's fired in by Gavin Brindley for the Wolverines. Both teams changing. Lechnov just plays wise beyond his years. What impresses me most are the plays that he doesn't make that normally a younger player would try to force in. The way he thinks the game is elite. And that's the biggest growth. Talking to Adam Nightingale of Michigan State and as well Nash Neenhouse's defensive partner, his play off the puck in the defensive zone has really improved and grown. Watch this. He goes down the wall. Looks like he's going to pinch. Let's it go through. Is cognizant of the fact that he's got another player behind him. That player in a significantly better position to pick that puck up and shoot it on the net. 
They're talking about him top five in the NHL draft. What have you seen from him this season and this weekend? I, I get it, and I think he can play uh, quick. Now, I think it would always behoove players to come back for one more year, unless you're one, one or two in the draft. One-timer. That goes high and wide. Strong shot from Nick Moldenhauer. And now flipped out by Jeremy Davidson of Michigan State. Sent right back in by Marshall Warren, the Wolverines. Four and a half gone by in the second. Still 1-0 Michigan State. This puck at center and slammed in from the center circle by Austin Orvitz. Nick Barczewski comes out to play it. They look for point. Long head man feed off the stick of a lunching Chase Pletsky. And the race for the puck in Michigan State takes control. Banked out of the zone. Nicholas Mueller. Cross ice. Reed Lepster for Michigan State. Barczewski comes out to steer it over to Stephen Holtz who can't handle the puck. Moving in from the corner, circling behind the net. Isaac Howard looks in front, and now moving up ice is Michigan and Philip LaPointe. Loose at the blue line. Tyler Duke, one-timer from Duke, and a kick save by Augustine, and it's out of play. End to end we go. Michigan State still up 1-0 on Michigan. Great effort there by Michigan on the rush. Tyler Duke with a little give and go that he flushed at Trey Augustine, but used his size, square to that puck down in the butterfly position. Carson Dorwart stick handles around. Garrett Shifsky into the zone. Laid in deep by the Spartans. Dug out on a backhand down low that goes wide from Daniel Russell. Nice forecheck there by Howard to create that turnover for Russell. T.J. Hughes through center. Leads it up the wing. Dylan Duke. One time. Score! Ethan Edwards ties it for Michigan. Well, dogged defensive play led to an odd man. A three on two for the Wolverines. We talked about the activity we've seen from Ethan Edwards. Yep, he's the one who jumps up, joins the forwards here as Shifsky's gonna move that puck up. He gets stuck, caught back behind, and Edwards just waiting, not rushing in towards the net, wants to make sure that that lane is open as the puck is chipped wide. Duke moves it back into the center, a fluttering puck that it was a great job to even get it on net. Great goal by Ethan Edwards. Third of the season for Edwards, who hammered that one home. And we're 1 1 early in the second. Here come the Wolverines again. McGrunty down low. Loose in front, and it stays out. Chance again. Blocked from Marshall Warren. And picked up by Michigan State. Spartans are scrambling in their own end right now. Saved by Augustine to the corner. Gavin Brindley takes a rough ride in the corner. Here comes Michigan State countering Tommy Manisto. Tried to leave it for Kelly. Let's snap high and wide from the slot. Ernest, he did a nice job dropping back as a winger. Cover left snap shot, and then he tipped it up over Barczewski. It's picked up here in Maryland Heights. Gavin O'Connell. It is jump in was blocked. Gavin Brindley kicked it out of the zone. Now loose in center. Kick to his stick. O'Connell moves in. O'Connell with a wrist shot. Fought off by Barczewski. Sturback can't handle the puck. And now taking it back for Michigan is Frank Nazer the third. Tyler Duke for Michigan through center. And Duke feathers it to the corner. Backhanded along. Marcus Stapa sends it back around to the other side. Stephen Holtz pitching in down low. Oh, and a big hit delivered and a penalty coming up. And as Marcus Stapa was leveled in the boards. And a touch up by Michigan State. And the Wolverines are going on the power play as Maxim Sturbeck will head in. He delivered the hit. So a power 
play for Michigan when they are buzzing with momentum. There's the shot from behind by Sturbeck. Michigan with a glorious chance that they were unable to capitalize on. We'll revisit that in a second, but how about that hit? That's a tough one. When we come back, the Michigan power play will be on center stage again. Well, the final piece of the puzzle will either be Michigan or Michigan State. And Boston College awaits our winner, the Frozen Four. Coming up April 11th in St. Paul on ESPN2. It's DU and BU will meet in the other matchup of the Frozen Four. There'll be an early game on display. We'll be one of the most talented and youngest players in all of college hockey, Macklin Celebrini, who is so good in that game against Minnesota. What a spin around pass that he converted on. Shot from the high slot, high and wide from Ethan Edwards, who has the goal for Michigan. Now shorthanded, moving up ice, and a shot from distance. Saved and holding on is Barcheski from Tiernan Shouty of Michigan State, and a faceoff will come back in the Michigan end. Shouty just continues to be a force as a penalty killer got a lot on that shot as well. Barcheski had to hold on to Shouty was skated straight at him to make sure that he couldn't drop that puck. Allow a transition to happen. Michigan 0 for 3 so far in the power play tonight. And the number one power play unit in college hockey. Leaving it for Gavin Brindley through center. Brindley into the zone. Here is Edwards at the line. Setting it up. McGorty. And a shot from the slot and a save by Augustine and a clear for the Spartans. Great set play there. A little bump out to Brindley. It goes high, low, and then right into the slot. Great save by Augustine. Gavin Brindley. Brings it in. Ethan Edwards at the line over to T.J. Hughes. Keeping it on the outside. McGorty. And at the doorstep trying to jam it in was still a Duke and covering is Trey Augustine for a faceoff. Still 50 seconds left in the Michigan power play. Take a look at that set play I made mention of. They're going to bring this puck once they settle in from high to low on that goal line. And then you're seeing right as soon as that puck starts moving low, Brindley moves into that slot, a right-handed shot, perfect for the one-timer. Picked around the circle, and Michigan tries to take control. Nick Moldenhauer. Mike Nazer along the wall, backhands it ahead. Good stick work by Mark Mustafa. And now Garrett Schiffsky puts on the brakes in the corner. Plays it back, and it jumps over the stick of Moldenhauer and out of the zone, and hustling back to get it is Jacob Trescott for Michigan. Moldenhauer leaves it for Trescott, and the captain. Now Frank Nazer the third. First round pick by the Blackhawks a couple of years ago. And a takeaway by Michigan State and a backhand out and a terrific clear from Matt Basgall. Not easy to do on the backhand, not suggested either. As the preferred way to exit your zone, most coaches will say, get on your forehand at any time possible. We don't want you to flub that backhand. And Maxim Sturbach exits the box, and Michigan State's killed off the penalty. Good work to get it out of the zone. Up the wing. Reed Lepster for Michigan State. Now the Spartans enter. Basgall a drive. And that's blocked up into the netting. Good job defensively from Ethan Edwards. Yeah, he goes down as Basgall was coming in. A right-hand shot releasing that with some traffic moving with him. If there would have been a rebound, there was at least a couple of Spartans there. Basgall's another one of those guys with the absence of Gucciardi has been needed, called upon to step up. And I've been very impressed with his game so far. Banner season for Michigan State. First time they've won the Big Ten. Of course, the league was formed for hockey back almost 10 years ago now. 
Michael down low. Eden Draper trying to dig it away from Jeremy Davidson in the corner. Michigan State jumps on it with Nicholas Mueller. Mueller working along the half wall. And he goes down as Draper puts him on the ice. The officials were having none of that action right there. And now Michigan takes control. Josh Ernesty out of the zone. Leads it up ahead for Philip LaPointe. Off the bench. Toe drag from the dot. And a shot that goes wide. Frank Nazer the third. And the Wolverines putting pressure on. A shot from Holtz gets blocked in front by Matt Basgall. Frank Nazer. Tries to move it around. Nicholas Bueller lost an edge. Tyler Duke across. Stephen Holtz goes down to the corner. The defenseman jumping down low and can't find the puck. And now Michigan jumps on it with McGorty. And it pops over the line and out of the zone. And going back to play at Frank Nazer for Michigan. And taken away by Davidson with the overtime winner for Michigan State here on Friday. Inside 8.50 to go in the second. Michigan State, a first period power play goal from Gavin O'Connell. The equalizer here in the second from Ethan Edwards of Michigan. Jockeying for the puck. And it gets tipped off the glass. And a penalty is coming up. And Tyler Duke may be handed in for Michigan. And Michigan State will go to the power play. Tyler Duke in stiff competition, trying to keep the puck in his offensive zone. That's where he gets caught up with. That's Howard, Isaac Howard, trying to keep him from that puck. Frank Nazer with an incredible individual effort as he was coming off the bench. Toe drag, wow, how about that one? Dynamic player, a first rounder, and on display here. It's been back and forth, physical. Is this playing out the way you anticipated? Yeah, for sure. I, mean, I think two really good teams going at it. A ton of respect for them. And, you know, obviously, we've got to stay out of the box. We've got an opportunity on the power play to try to take advantage of it. What are you looking for here on this power play? You've already got a power play goal in this one. What have you seen for your power play so far tonight? Yeah, I mean, I think our power play is at its best when it's playing fast, attacking. And, and regardless if we score, we're looking to try to create momentum for our team. Appreciate the time, Coach. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, guys. Yep. Adam Nightingale, the Big Ten Coach of the Year. 30 seconds gone in the man advantage for Michigan State. Gavin O'Connell has got the goal for the Spartans. Moving in. Leaves it. Along the wall to the high slot. Shot and a glove save by Jake Barczewski. Is walking down the slot with Carson Dorward at Michigan State. Uh, greatest one-on-one -on -one battle we've seen all game between a shooter and a goalie just heads up after a terrific entry here moves over to door is coming right down head up leans into that one and Barczewski says uh-uh I'm better I'm ready for this one he snares that with the glove the Barczewski the local kid he's from O'Fallon Missouri grew up about 10 minutes from this ring and the grad transfer from Canisius a four-year starter for Canisius. In fact, second in their program history and wins, and he helped Canisius get to the NCAA tournament where they lost to Minnesota last year. And, and he was the top of that game against Minnesota, just saying, hey, if this kid can stand on his head, we believe we can beat Minnesota, who was an absolute juggernaut last season, and he played solid that game, but ultimately the likes of Cooley, Nyes, Snuggerud, just too much to contain and he needed about 40 to 50 tickets for his family and friends in fact one of his youth coaches here in st louis is keith kachuk who's here today that's pretty cool pretty nice to come back you know i'd call keith kachuk the godfather of st louis hockey and not because he played here but because of the way his offspring have developed through this program and wow they turned into something matthew kachuk obviously with the florida panthers there is Keith Kachuk, over a thousand points in his long career. Unbelievable, the two of them. And, and I saw a stat that they were outpacing their dad in their young careers, both leaders with their organizations and, and doing it old school. I mean, they'll chuck them with anybody. Artem Lepschnab at the blue line, over to Mueller, looking for a redirection, tipped wide by Reed Lester. And now along the boards, Nicholas Mueller, the Swiss product, to the line. Let's know. 
Artem Lechnov again. And the one-timer from the wing, it's blocked, didn't get through from Joey Larson, who leads Michigan State in power play goals this season. I mean, just like Ernesty Draper's out there, understanding that that is their preferred shooter. He's got seven power play goals, and they're just posting a player up, taking away that one-timer, saying, hey, this is going to hurt, but it's going to help the team. And it goes off the linesman and stays in the zone. Mueller moving in. Mueller a wrist shot and squeezing it and hanging on is Jacob Barczewski. Yeah, really got, I think got that with the left elbow squeeze in as that turnover that was off of the official created a grand opportunity for Michigan State. There it is in a quick turnaround. A nice drop pass in there for Mueller who's been terrific in this series, leading Michigan State, in fact, in points. Barczewski's had to be the sharpest he's been all day long in the last couple of minutes. Pays off win for the Spartans. Matt Basgall. So look how high Shivsky is. Just taking that shot away over there. One-timer down low, kicked aside by Barczewski, off of Daniel Russell. Howard, and another save, Barczewski. And now a clear as Jacob Truscott sends it the length of the ice. And the power play about to expire. Into the zone, Isaac Howard. Moves it along. Carson Dorwart. Now Howard. Cross ice moving in. Lechnov and a save. Barczewski then it popped free and maybe hit the defenseman Marshall Warren in front. Great read there by Lechnov jumping in. Letting that go with some pace. Nash Neenhaus to center and played in by Tanner Kelly. Tommy Manisto. And he cycles it down low in a backhand. Tanner Kelly. It's the body from Pantilli at the line. Walking the line. Maxim Sturback. And another save by Barczewski. But a flurry of chances for Michigan State. There's Buzz in the net. Well, and what did Coach Nightingale said? He said, we want a power play, but if we don't score, we want to build momentum. And that's what we're seeing right now. Very similar to what we saw Michigan do in period number one. Look at Warren there in the goal crease. Saving that puck. He's looking around going, did you guys just see that? That just hit me. Where to go? we got to credit the defenseman with a save. Four shots generated on the power play, but the momentum that Adam Nightingale was looking for. Now a shot from up top, and it goes wide from Austin Orvitz, the freshman. Orvitz, the one-timer from the point. Hits the back wall. Two in a row, you gotta hit the net. Eluding the broken stick, and Orvitz punches it down low. Manisto swings it back to the corner for Sturback, and that one goes on through. Kelly tried to tip that puck. Orbitz plays it down behind the net. Mueller, stick handling. Trying to slide it in front and trying to jam it home was Tanner Kelly on the doorstep. But Michigan State applying a lot of pressure here. Tyler Duke. Oh, right up. Risky play. He made the, the exit pass and dumped in by Nick Moldenhauer, the Wolverines. Final five minutes of period two, tied at one. Maxim Sturback for Michigan State. Leading it into the zone for Nicholas Mueller. Lays it along, back behind the net. Ethan Edwards for Michigan. Out at center and backing into his own end is Geary. And work along the boards for Michigan State. Reed Lepster. Michigan State has really turned it up now. Patrick Geary across. Matt Basgall, rink wide. Now here come the Wolverines, a chance for a three on two, and throwing the pass the length of the ice, and Augustine to come out and steer it to the corner, and Danger giving up a chance in tight to Michigan. Spot play, but it takes a lot of confidence to come out. You miss or you misplay that puck. It's four by six, empty net. Now countering Brindley for Michigan. Gavin Brindley on a backhand toward the slot, pass broken up, and now pops out of the zone, up the wing. Here comes Gavin O'Connell for Michigan State. O'Connell trying to drive the net, and he gets hauled down by Warren. Just a good old-fashioned battle right there. Very clean. Moving in for the point is Levchnov. Lays it into the corner for O'Connell. Artem Levchnov jumping down low. 
Right now, the Wolverine defense needs a change. And this is the long change period, the second period. Frank Nazer. Now they get the change behind the play. McGorty is shot. And a cover up by Augustine to the top of the crease. McGorty shooting that puck in for Brindley, who is on his backhand. We have action going both ways, but the Spartans seem like they've got a little more jump in their step. So Art and Andrew coming up at the intermission 324 from now but Michigan State applying the pressure after Michigan got the equalizer but Michigan State is pushing back now. Well they're breaking out with speed using that neutral zone and grinding hustling working down low for those opportunities. barcheski has been at his best in this second period. Again the sixth meeting between these two teams this season. And the most played rivalry in the history of college hockey. Michigan State's won four of the previous five this year. Daniel Russell into the corner. Moved along by Carson Dorward. Here's Russell spinning. Goes cross ice to Nash Nienhaus. Plays it along for Dorward. Takes the body from Garrett Shifsky. And trying to get the one timer, but can't handle the pass there is Isaac Howard. Looking for the redirection. Now Dorward along the half wall. Along the goal line and it floats in on Jacob Barcheski who covers for a face off of 243 to go here in the second period. Tomorrow night ESPN plus NHL matchup. Yes the Blues just right down the road and downtown St. Louis against Connor McDavid. And the Edmonton Oilers in town coverage begins 9 Eastern, 8 Central on ESPN Plus tomorrow night. Oh, what a brutal loss for St. Louis last night. Tough one. Ooh. Curious to see if Jimmy Snugger from the University of Minnesota will turn pro, sign, and maybe play his first game against Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers. Certainly a possibility. Terrific season that the sophomore had. Blues faint playoff hopes after took a hit last night getting shut out at home by the San Jose Sharks and their GM Mike Greer was here to watch Artem Levchnov on Friday. And the Sharks more than likely will pick right near the top of the draft. And as Michigan State breaks in Tanner Kelly who's shown great speed here this weekend was a real factor for them in their win Friday night against Western Michigan. And passed for the point intercepted by Mark Estapa and Michigan gets it out of the zone in the neutral zone Estapa and some miscommunication there with Warren trying to lead the defenseman who was jumping back to his own blue line and a big hit delivered by Frank Nazer in the corner just hammers on Manisto fired in from center Mark Estapa of Michigan 145 to go in the second. From center. Here's Lebster for the Spartans. Lebster. And a riser that goes high and wide, but held in at the left point. Played down low by Patrick Geary. And floated out by Michigan. And out to center. Gavin Brindley is shot from outside, and that one goes wide of the cage. Bouncing puck to the Michigan blue line. This puck at center. Jeremy Davidson leads it for Mueller into the zone. Mueller takes a hit along the wall from TJ Hughes and an exit for Michigan and sent right back in by Matt Basgall of Michigan State. And finally offside was called as the Spartans had not cleared the zone. And now after the play, both teams take an exception with the other. Every ganging up on Davidson down there, and finally somebody came to his aid. Well, the frozen four on the line between these two teams. And the final berth in St. Paul as the frozen four starting Thursday, April 11th on ESPN2. More information on the 2024 NCAA Frozen Four. Go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. And Artie Lepschnoff was the player who came in and cleared out 
some of the Wolverine bodies for Jeremy Davidson who's getting pinballed around. And he draws the penalty for it. And so Warren took exception to that little whack after and all of a sudden there's three players getting them and then Oh, I, I'm not so sure about that. That is a rather strong and large individual at six foot 195 pounds of Marshall Warren went down. Part prepared. of it also is the whistle came so late. Yeah. Yeah. So two periods in a row. Michigan will have a power play to close out a period and potentially open one. One timer and a save by Augustine. And the chance from Dylan Duke. Michigan is 0 for 4 in the power play so far. And again, that pop out play being run. Ethan Edwards leaves it for Gavin Brindley with speed through center. He makes that look so easy and he just dices his way through. It's a great edge work that he's got. Brindley down low for Hughes. Inside 20 seconds, pass across for Gorty from the dot. And a backhand loose, trying to jam it in. And no, it does not go in. How about the official right on top of that as somebody was just doing everything they could to shovel that puck into the left of Augustine. Here comes Edwards. And a big collision at the blue line. That'll take us to the end of 40. Well, nice power play by Michigan. They had the structure. They got a few opportunities, but Michigan State had Trey Augustine, and that was enough to extinguish the 50 seconds or so that they had of power play action. A minute six of carryover time on the power play as we're through two in Maryland Heights, Missouri. Michigan State and Michigan nodded at one. And a big third period setting up for these longtime rivals. Shots are even 22 aside. The score is even after two as we go to the studio. Arda and Andrew Raycroft. The last spot in the Frozen Four is on the line at least 20 more minutes here in Maryland Heights, Missouri. You look at earlier, BU, they've advanced to St. Paul. DU is headed to the Frozen Four. And then Boston College outlasting the defending champs earlier tonight. And the final spot will either go to the Big Ten champs, Michigan State, or the Michigan Wolverines. We're tied at one, heading to the third. And Michigan will start the third period on a power play. With Ben Clymer and our ESPN crew, Roxy Bursey with you. It's been tough. It's been physical. It's all we expected from the most played rivalry in the history of college hockey. Well, it's been physical, but they've been disciplined. They've reeled it in after that first period. Now Michigan's got an unbelievable opportunity on the power play. Fresh ice, their puck movement elite. They need to use that. That high to low to the slot play is the one that I would anticipate they try to take advantage of on one side. It's Brindley as a right-hander. The opposite side is Duke. Ethan Edwards through center. Again, the most lethal power play in college hockey and a clear for Michigan State. But the Wolverines without their key quarterback on the power play. As Seamus Casey not available tonight after being injured on Friday. Gavin Brindley into the zone. Played over to the left wing corner. T.J. Hughes behind the net. McGorty moves in and a shot looking for a tip. And it's covered by Augustine, and right on the doorstep was Gavin Brindley for Michigan. 31 seconds remain in the power play. A really unorthodox way to freeze the puck. Augustine goes down, puts his right leg out, and the puck stays underneath it, and nobody you know, kind of digs in there for that. That puck would have came loose for certain. Face-off win for Michigan. Martins can't clear. Gavin Brindley along the wall. Moves it down the wing. Brindley on the half boards. Edwards a one-timer. It's kicked out by Augustine, and it just goes wide from Dylan Duke on the rebound. Kept in by Michigan. Duke in the corner. Knocked away by Nash Neenhouse. Penalty about to expire. And out of the box is Artem Levshnov for Michigan State. Young defenseman moving it up ice for Michigan State. Reed Lepster into the zone. 
slams on the brakes. Waiting for help, plays in the opposite corner. Patrick Geary in deep. Shoveled along by Reed Lebster. Ethan Edwards over to Marcus Stoppa. Michigan exits, and now McGrady into the zone, and he just plays it in as Michigan changing. Isaac Howard sidesteps a check through center. And then it's poked away and out of the zone. Here comes Frank Nazer for Michigan. Nazer hits the trailer and a one-timer and a kick save by Augustine off Marcus Stoppa. Delayed offside against Michigan State. Now they clear the zone and Nash Neenhaus jams it free. Loose puck, jumping on it, Red Savage for Michigan State from a tough angle, and it's steered aside by Jake Barczewski, the goalkeeper for Michigan. And a collision near the blue line leads to an opportunity the other way, and a backhand pass to the slot by Chase Pletsky. Well, just like off of their power play when Michigan State really started to turn the momentum their direction off of this penalty kill, they have a jump to their step. They're controlling the momentum and the pace. And a save and holding for a draw is Barczewski in the Michigan zone. On the power of play, there was a couple of saves where Augustine had to be sharp. We'll show you one of them here as this puck comes in and right in the slot area, he solves Duke. And here is Nazer putting that back to a stop that he was able to get with the left pad, kicked out. At center, Michigan State and on the re-entry. Taken away by Keenan Draper. Racing for the puck, Josh Ernesty. Hustling, and he takes the ride from Maxim Sturback into the boards. And the backhand out by Austin Orvitz, who's gotten a lot of more, lot more ice time tonight in the absence of David Gucciardi for Michigan State. They'll look the point. Trying to dig it out, and it pops over to Austin Orbitz for the Spartans. You know, sometimes in the third, in a game like this that will end someone's season, you'll see groups come out really pushed for the first 10, maybe 12 minutes, and all of a sudden you'll see them start to play a touch tighter. Not sure that would happen, but that often does because the finality gets so much closer. Two of the highest scoring teams in the country, they're tied at one. Hits off the skate of Patrick Geary at the Michigan State blue line. And now moving in, Garrett Shitsky for the Wolverines. At the back side of the cage, Patrick Geary lifts it out to center. Marshall Warren can't clear, moving in, fanning on a shot. Nicholas Mueller, now Geary moving in. Geary looking for a tip, and it goes wide. And now here comes Michigan. T.J. Hughes countering. Hughes from the top of the circle, it gets deflected up into the netting. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship continues tomorrow night. Two more amazing Elite Eight games over on ESPN and the app. First game of rematch of the national championship from a year ago. Caitlin Clark in Iowa taking on Angel Reese in LSU at 7 Eastern. And then Paige Beckers in UConn against the freshman phenom Juju Watkins in USC. The last two spots in the women's Final Four are on the line. Last spot in the Frozen Four will be decided here from the wing and a shot and a save off Isaac Howard, the blocker from Jake Barczewski. Glove down and cutting through center. Frank Nazer for Michigan. Trying to lead it for McGorty. It was something we saw in Friday's game. All of a sudden, Coach Dorado would change the lines. He'd put Brindley, McGorty, and Nazer together. And something he told me yesterday was, look, I just figured in that third period, if we're going to go down, we're going to go down with our aces out there. And he's put that group back together. And they had a strong third period, three goals to come back and win against North Dakota on Friday. Michigan State also had to rally in it from a deficit in the third. And they beat Western Michigan in overtime when Jeremy Davidson had the winner. Augustine steers it off to the corner. Through center, Red Savage. And off the skate of Luca Fantilli in Michigan. Moving out, Josh Ernesty for the Wolverines. Ernesty goes wide. Takes a hit behind the net from Patrick Geary. 
Over five minutes gone by. Here in this third period, still tied at one. Looking toward the slot and a driving Joey Larson, but that goes on through and all the way down and an icing against Michigan. Spartans getting their tally first. Back in the first period from Gavin O'Connell on the power play. And then Michigan in the second period pulling even. It was Ethan Edwards, the defenseman with the goal. So we are 1-1, 1429 1 remaining in regulation. Fourth line out for Michigan State. They played so hard in the offensive zone. Tanner Kelly just dogged in his puck pursuit. And that's the key with Michigan State is their depth. And even the fourth line, which has, as you talked about, been so productive for them. The second most productive line in this series this season. 13 points for that fourth line. And one of the youngest teams in the country. Although BC and Denver, the two youngest teams, and they're going to St. Paul and Michigan State would love to join them, but Michigan has other ideas. Young and laced with high-end talent. Love down by Tommy Manisto. Moves around Holtz, who lost his stick. He tried to shoot that right through the legs of Duke. And the loose puck picked up by Dylan Duke as the deep pair was changing for Michigan State. Shisky slams on the brakes. Hughes moves in. Hughes and a shot blocked by a diving Tiernan Shouty for Michigan State, but held in by the Wolverines. Down low, score! Marshall Warren off the pass from Jacob Trescott, and Michigan has the lead. What a incredible vision here by Truscott as he collects this puck and looks to his D partner who's down on the rush but then opens back up doesn't go back into his defensive position there is Warren on the side of the net and he one touches that right in the net doesn't even really have to hammer it that hard Truscott finds him and Warren came right at us. You could see the emotion on his face. A Boston College transfer. Nets his fourth of the year, and none bigger than that. So the assists go to Jacob Trescott and Garrett Shifsky at 629. 2 1 Michigan. Going wide, driving the net. And a puck that pinballs over the corners. Reed Lester attacking for the Spartans. And a brave effort here. They're cutting in across that goal crease, forcing the issue with the defense. Too often players pivot and go behind the net. They want to avoid that contact. Davidson stings one wide. But the winner will get Boston College. Moves toward the slot, and now Frank Nazer moving it out for Michigan. Gorty on the wing, two on one, shot and a save by Augustine, and a huge stop for the netminder for Michigan State. You could just feel the frustration after McGordy saw that snared by Augustine, an unbelievable and huge save on a two on one break. Brindley, McGordy, two of the top scorers in the Big Ten, unable to solve them, but Warren was two one Michigan here late in the third. On one break for Michigan. McGrory calls his own number. Looked at Brindley briefly, but then was heads up with Augustine, who stood tall. Might not be a bigger save to keep his team in this one. Isaac Howard for Michigan State. And try to backhand pass that gets knocked away by Draper, then recovered though by Daniel Russell. Pass toward the slot and. A shot that gets turned aside by Jake Barczewski, not much behind it, and he fought it off. Jacob Trescott ahead for Josh Ernesty as Michigan moves out. Nash Neenhouse, the captain, leaves it for Artem Lemschnow. And the freshman, and just too far out in front of Isaac Howard. And now Michigan tries to counter, and Nash Neenhouse takes a whack at it with a high stick. 
And that gets whistled down. Just over 12 minutes to go. Tomorrow featured ESPN Plus NHL matchup from right here in St. Louis. Connor McDavid and the Oilers against the St. Louis Blues who are desperately clinging to their faint playoff hopes. Oilers and Blues tomorrow night. Shot off the draw and a save by Trey Augustine. It's a perfect draw there right back to Dylan Duke by TJ Hughes. I got by the Spartans in a backhand out by Nash Neenhaus. This one will go short of icing and it's waved off. Tyler Duke behind his own net for Michigan. Inside 11.40 to go. Dylan Duke through center. A couple of goals here on Friday. Patrick Geary for Michigan State. And he takes a rough ride from Garrett Shifsky as the Spartans move out. Ethan Edwards behind the net. Edwards tries to lead it for Nazer. Edwards got it back and now exits. And from center, he just slams it in. Matt Basgold for Michigan State. Banks it looking for the long headman pass that gets tipped into the zone by Red Savage. Yeah, big tip there just to get the defense off for the Spartans. Rick wide into the zone and a nice hit by Maxim Sturback. Taking out Frank Nazer, who's at the end of a shift. Cross. Marshall Warren right now has the go ahead goal for Michigan. Oh, my. And a huge hit delivered by Philip LaPointe. And down is Tiernan Shouty. And Michigan State will go in the power play. And I'm wondering if this might be more than just two. This is problematic. I, I feel strongly the officials are going to have a further conversation about a cut shouty in a precarious position as he was going one way with his back to the pursuit of LaPointe. And they're taking shouty right down the tunnel toward the dressing room. And take a look here as shouty's going one way backwards and then gets hit by LaPointe. There's Draper and Shouty is blind to that hit. And they're not going to challenge this. We're going to have a two minute power play for the Spartans. Gavin O'Connell with the power play goal. Well, the Phil officials at the Michigan State bench, will they challenge it? Talking to Coach Nightingale. Our referees are Jeff Miller and Stephen Robillard. And there will be no challenge in the power play for Michigan State. The boarding call on Philip LaPointe. I think at this time, I mean, the worst case, you burn your time out. Why wouldn't you challenge it? I mean, it just, it's, you know, I think those, would, that would have been less likely than those contacts of the head that Michigan could have challenged earlier. But nonetheless, I think I deal that card or just, you know, use my, my time out. Clear for Michigan. As LaPointe sits in the box, the only goal for Michigan State in the power play in the first period. The drop, Matt Basco, a big drive and a save by Jake Barczewski. Well, right on the doorstep was Daniel Russell. Barczewski grabs out with the glove. Nothing to be had after the fact. Huge power play. Take a look at the drop pass from Howard, who's been on fire with his assist. Five games in a row with an assist. Puts that back. And after Tiernan Shouty went down the tunnel to the room, he's back on the bench now for Michigan State. That's good to see. Face off win for the Wolverines and a clear rimmed around by Stephen Holtz. Midway through the third, a minute 25 and power play time left. Isaac Howard across the line. Matt Basgall at the point. Plays it across. Carson Dorwart down low. Basgall. One timer. And that one is gloved and held onto by Jake Barczewski. Howard leaned into that pretty good. Now the top unit will head over the boards for the Spartans. I said it before. Larson with the lethal one timer. Right handed shout below on your television screen. But Michigan's done a tremendous job of really keen on him. Sneaking out a little bit, trying to close that gap quicker.
Minute seven left in the boarding call on Philip LaPointe. Tied up in the corner. Trying to get it in front by himself. Score! Joey Larson was by himself. And he ties the game on a power play for Michigan State. His first goal in 14 games. And Joey Larson has pulled Michigan State even. An unbelievable, unbelievable abandonment of the slot as this play develops. The most lethal power play goal scorer is all by his lonesome Wolverines bursting back to try to help their netminder. And he flushes it from the slot area there. A one-timer on a rolling puck. We are tied at two apiece. And the Spartans fans are loving it. His team leading eighth power play goal, his 16th overall. As Michigan was caught puck watching and they lost Joey Larson. I cannot believe that there was not a single player in the slot. Nobody. Both goals for Sparty on the power play tonight. Nash Deanhouse in the center circle. Glove down, TJ Hughes. Worth noting, I believe it was Mueller who identified and got that puck into the slot. Great work by him. And that wasn't an easy pass to handle either. It was bouncing. Uh oh, it was, yeah, very much so. It's hard for goalies, though, when that puck is rolling, you don't know where it's going to go. It's like a knuckleball. Nicholas Mueller dumps it in. Inside 845 now in a 2 2 game. Frank Nazer with speed. Cuts to the middle. Goes to Brindley on the wing. Back to the point and unable to handle the pass, and it's. Down toward the Michigan end of the ice as Marshall Warren chases after it. Carson Dorwart. Turnaround shot that just pushed wide by Jake Barcheski. Lebster for the Spartans. And a one timer from the line and held on to by Barcheski. And through traffic, he saw it. And he covers for a faceoff. What an atmosphere here just outside of St. Louis. The Spartans, the Wolverines. Couple of goals this period tied up. Emotions are high. What a goal so, by Joey Larson. Eighth power play marker of the year. We want to show you how he was so wide open off of this face up. Watch the Wolverines. Couple of D in the corner. Another player goes to the wall and right here great identification that Larson's all by his lonesome Barcheski comes out to challenge but he couldn't solve the one timer of Joey Larson left wide open in the slot and off the face off turned aside by Jake Barcheski just too much puck watching there and lacking communication somebody has to recognize and communicate. Josh Ernesty brings it out from Michigan and plays it in from center. Nash Neenhouse, first one on the puck, takes the body from Kiernan Draper. Lewis picked up by Michigan State. A stop, I was trying to get to the far side there and somebody got a stick on him. Keenan Draper with a nice feed up the slot there. Carson Dorwart for Michigan State through his center. Howard across the line. Over to the corner for Howard. And he winds up and covering and hanging on is Jake Barcheski for a draw. Quick three on two there for the Spartans. Duke does a nice job. He was caught flat footed and did his best to get back and then used body position to help support Barcheski. Keep in mind, these teams played overtime eight days ago in East Lansing when Michigan State won the Big 12 Tournament Championship on a goal from Patrick Geary. And the freshman defenseman across the line. Dylan Duke goes wide, drives the net, score! Dylan Duke puts Michigan back on top. Oh. 
Well, the new NHL is about one thing. It's about speed. It's about being able to do things at a high rate of speed. Connor McDavid, the best in the world in that. And how about Duke is going to show you some of his speed. His 25th of the season, sixth in this series, just turns on the afterburners to the far side there. And what a goal for the Michigan native. Just torching his way to the far side. Three goals this weekend for Dylan Duke in a 3-2 lead for the Wolverines. Now Frank Nazer drives in. Between the legs, score! Gavin Brindley and a two-goal lead for the Wolverines. Michigan pounces on a Spartan team that was maybe just trying to catch their way after goal number three and oh my Nazer. Look at that pass between his legs on the money to Gavin Brindley who gets Michigan to a two goal margin. The Big Ten Player of the Year. 25th goal for Burnley. How about that pass by Frank Nazer? This time of the season, this time of the hockey game, he does it and pulls it off. A tip high over the crossbar. Off Tanner Kelly. Michigan State needs to respond. Artem Levshnov. Centering pass and unable to hold on to it is tiered and shouting for Michigan State. Dylan Duke and TJ Hughes and fired in from beyond the blue line. And peeling off for a change as Michigan is Michigan State looking to move up inside six and a half. Levchnov for the Spartans. Tanner Kelly into the zone. Pass in front for a cutting Levchnov. And now the puck bounces over to the freshman defenseman. Ethan Edwards, the second assist. And Nazer slid it over to Brindley. Levchnov dancing up top. Off a skate into the corner. Big block there by Estapa. Lefstoff was trying to snake his way in, find a shooting lane. So two goals in 12 seconds for Michigan. Dumped in from center by Luca Fantilli. McGorty behind the net. Now hold to the point, tipped wide by Brindley. And a two-goal lead for Michigan inside 540. Tyler Duke going back to get it for Michigan. In no hurry behind his own net. Now moving up. Banks it. And it comes all the way down. That'll be an icing call against Michigan. And a face off in front of Jake Barcheski with 5.20 to go. Take another look at Frank Nazer's through his legs pass to Gavin Brindley. Because it was special. So he's on his backhand. That's why he does that play. Doesn't want to try to thread it to the backhand because the defenseman took that lane away. It was not available. Unbelievable skill and creativity, as long as, as well as some confidence. Goes the length of the ice and another icing call against Michigan. Well, Nazer, a Chicago draft pick. Do you think there's anybody you know that uh, could probably flush one or two if he can deal them up like that? Oh, my. So the first rounder by the Blackhawks a couple of years ago to Gavin Brindley. And the Big Ten Player of the Year taken by the Blue Jackets in the second round last year. He was so good last year in the NCAA tournament. It almost like was a joke that he was a second rounder. I'm like, this guy is unbelievable. He also had a great performance of the World Juniors for Team USA, where he's voted the top American player. Isaac Howard through center. And he bangs it in. Inside five minutes. TJ Hughes. Garrett Shifsky. And just dumps it in. Michigan State exits the zone. Backhanded right back in by Garrett Shifsky as Michigan short and quick with their shifts right now. Russell. 
Good stick work by Keenan Draper for Michigan. Now Estapa plays it across. Really nice exit there by Estapa. He was in traffic and he used his body to protect that puck and then fed it across. Nash Neenhaus just feared that comeback on Friday. Shouty across the line. Shouty takes a hit from Ernesty, hits the trailer. Geary is shot blocked in front. Loose pinballs around on the doorstep. And Barczewski tries to squeeze it, and he does. Flurry of activity trying to bear down on Jake Barczewski, but Frank Nazer with a difference making pass to give the Wolverines. The two goal margin with four minutes left. I mean, I would have just been like, hey, really? Like, really? <laughs> this time in this game at that rate of speed? I mean, unbelievable. 3.58 to go. A two goal lead for Michigan and trying to punch the last ticket available for the Frozen Four. And this ridiculous pass from Frank Nazer the third it, it's to Gavin Brindley giving Michigan the two goal lead. That's so incredible what he was able to pull off. And right now Boston College to have all things remain this way. That's the guy you're going to have to deal with. Net empty. So BC will have the 830 game against the winner of this in Denver. BU. So Adam Nightingale is pulled. Trey Augustine for an extra attacker. They picked up an extra attacker goal on Friday against Western Michigan to tie it. But they need two. So they pull him with just inside four minutes. Laid across, Neenhaus at the blue line. Levshnov for Michigan State. Isaac Howard down low. And from the goal line, moving it in front, it's loose, and Michigan gets a clear. I like that recipe for Michigan State, though. Bring it up high, try to thread it in, and then just go to work in and around that goal crease area and get a just a hungry goal. Backhanded in. And it just does squeeze over the blue line for Michigan. Toward the empty net, it goes wide and icing call. Hughes just got whacked as he was trying to skate that puck over the blue line. I'm wondering if his stick is still intact. If he stays on the ice, he's going to take the face off. He needs to be certain that it is, because it'll be awfully important face off if it breaks and he draws back. All of a sudden, Michigan will be out there five players with only four sticks. The Michigan, who had three goals on Friday to come back, has scored three times here in the third in this one. 321 remaining. Empty net at the other end. Face off win for the Spartans. Matt Basco. Shot through traffic and hits a body and goes over to the corner. And it gets whistled down for a hand pass. As it was gloved ahead by Michigan State to face off will come outside the Michigan zone. A heads up call there by the officials. And right now, this is just absolute pure hunger. There is very little rules that will be I guess used or abided by at this point in the game as that puck gets around Barczewski, it is going to be survival of the fittest. Face up win for Red Savage. Plays it in low for the Spartans. Ethan Edwards plays it around. On the boards, Michigan State, a turnover, but kept in. Punched along. Savage, a turnaround shot that hits a body and goes up over the netting and lands behind the netting in the crowd. 2.55 remaining, and a faceoff will stay inside the Michigan blue line. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship continues tomorrow night. Two more amazing Elite Eight games over on ESPN and a much anticipated rematch of last year's national championship. Caitlin Clark and I went 7 Eastern against LSU. And then it's UConn and USC. Final two spots in the women's final four will be decided. Last spot in the Frozen Four will be decided here. And Michigan's able to get it out of the zone toward the empty net, hits off the side of the net. And Artem Leshnov back there for Michigan State. Leshnov ahead and tipped into the zone. 
by Nicholas Mueller. No, he missed it, didn't touch it. That's an icy call. It'll come back all the way to the other end. Now, even though the net was empty, Adam Nightingale can put the goaltender back in, and he will with a faceoff back inside the Michigan State blue line. So Michigan State needs to win this faceoff and exit clearly for Michigan. You got to pursue this puck. Just try to grind it along the wall. Do anything you can to just chew up these precious seconds. A broken stick and a slashing call coming up to Michigan State. And in disbelief, it's Nicholas Mueller heading in for the Spartans. And he pleads his case. The official is still following him around. And the official just kind of open armed, armed says, well, look at the stick. Now, this is something, though, that as the game is evolving, if that's a, a Sherwood 730 from 25 years ago, there's no chance that stick breaks. As these sticks have become more and more responsive, they're thinner and thinner, and I think the just automatic call of a broken stick being a slash, I mean, it just has to be evaluated because they're just not as strong as they once were. And then Nicholas Mueller on his way to the penalty box broke his stick in frustration, slammed it against the glass right next to the open door. And they had to go bring him a new piece of lumber. And now a power play for Michigan with a two goal lead. Edwards across, one timer score! And if that's Duke, that's his third point tonight. And yes, it is. Dylan Duke will get credit for the goal. Four goals this weekend for Duke. Big win there off the faceoff, and the Michigan Wolverines go to work. Puck movement just next level. How about Brindley leaning into that? And Duke right on the top of the doorstep. Tips that one from the goal crease. Edwards over to Brindley. And tipped home by Duke. 5-2 Michigan with 2.19 to go. So the redirection, Dylan Duke off the drive from Gavin Brindley. That pass go. He takes a big hit to make the play from Tanner Kelly. Mark Estapa for the Wolverines. And he fires it in from center. Moved along by Josh Ernesty. Here comes Patrick Geary for Michigan State. Tanner Kelly gains the zone. A minute 40 to go. And a puck that skips out of play and a faceoff will come inside the Michigan end. Yeah, Edwards rimmed that with some significant steam and actually hit one of the Wolverines players leaning over the bench as you get a look at Dylan Duke. Two goals Friday, two goals in this one. And I mean, I get it's a three goal game, but you Michigan want, State Augustine has Augustine out. in the net. Doesn't matter if they keep scoring, you gotta score. You're not wrong. And effectively, as soon as Michigan scored, pull them and just take your chances for the rest, remainder of the game. Four goal third period for Michigan. Artem Levshnov. Michigan State moves up ice. Gavin O'Connell has got a goal for Michigan State. Lost control of the puck. Mark Estapa counters for the Wolverines. Estapa. Lost the puck and now Red Savage through center. Takes a hit from Draper, played all the way down on net. And as Trey Augustine will leave it for Artem Leshnov. Final 50 seconds. And Michigan for the third straight year trying to get to the frozen four. Marshall Warren ahead. 
chipped in by Josh Ernesty. Well, Marshall Warren potentially playing his former teammates, a captain last year for Boston College. Tyler Duke leaves it for Stephen Holtz. And Holtz, an amazing story. And a backhand down low and a save by Barcheski off Jeremy Davidson. Final 10 seconds. Back into the zone. And now the teams will need to get separated. Time has run out. And for the third straight year, the Michigan Wolverines are headed to the Frozen Four. A great season for Michigan State. Their first Big Ten regular season in tournament championships. But heartbreak in the regional final to their bitter arch rivals. The Michigan Wolverines, who had not won a game this season, would trail it after one period until Friday. They did it Friday, came back and won with a three-goal third. Ben, they scored four here in the third period tonight, and they win 5-2. A couple of frozen fours for Coach Nerado. This team is built on offense, and all of a sudden, the offense popped. They've been, there's been smoke all game long, pushing opportunities. But again and again, you had Augustine make those plays, then all of a sudden, 12 seconds apart. Really queued up by an incredible Naser pass. Then Brindley tips one that or sends one in that Dylan Duke tips home. And for Brandon Dorado, it was a year to the day the interim tag was removed. He was named the Michigan permanent head coach. And now fast forward a year, and for the second time, He's taken. He's created Michigan some pretty high expectations for himself year over four. year to head to the Frozen Four. But you know, a guy who dealt with adversity in his early parts of of his coaching career, dealing with transition, dealing with an interim tag, yet continue to not only do his day-to-day -day activities, but bring in just absolute blue chip talent that you saw on display. Not that dissimilar, frankly, from what Coach Nightingale's done, the Big Ten Coach of the Year in two years has completely revamped this Spartan team. I looked there briefly and worth noting that Jake Barczewski, who lost to Minnesota last year in the NCAA tournament, will visit the Frozen Four for the first time in his career. This is exactly why he came to Michigan. Truscott with that pass over to Marshall Warren. So the Michigan Wolverines are on to the Frozen Four. And a 5-2 win over Michigan State as we're joined by one.